Hi, and welcome to this webinar about CodeSonar. My name is Joakim Nilsson, and I work at NOAA Solution in Sweden. This presentation uh, will give you an overview of CodeSonar. My co-worker Michael will show a demo of CodeSonar, which is available in a separate recording. If you have any questions about CodeSonar, you can contact me. And if you're located in Denmark or Finland, you are most welcome to contact my other co-workers, Henrik or Martin. So, CodeSonar, what is it? It's a static tool that analyzes source code and binaries and the strongest part is C and C++. It has a user easy to use interface. If you can use Excel, you can manage CodeSonar findings. Also, CodeSonar can be ta tailored to fit your needs, and it's developed by Grammatech, a US-based company that only do static tool analysis for software. They have many specialists with, within the static analysis area. So, when I look at the tool for the first time, I find it interesting to know who uses it. Here are some examples of companies using CodeSonar. And that's what's common about all of them is um, they are developing a software in C and C++, mainly embedded system. So, why do static analysis? Well, as you can see, the blue area shows where in the process you can apply static analysis compared to dynamic analysis, which is orange. When you do a static, you don't have to be able to execute your code. So there are mainly four reasons to use static analysis. You can use it from start. If you compile the code, you can start testing it. You can find errors at a very early stage. And also you can find errors in code that is hard and costly to test. And it's an excellent complement to manual time-consuming code reviews. So, why is early important, early bug fixing? This is a graph to show when the bugs usually ent in entered into the system. So how much does it cost to remove this? Well, it depends on your process and also the labor cost. But here are two graphs showing the relative cost. One is for V-model waterfall, and one is for Agile. Agile methods is less expensive due to shorter feedback loops. The basic idea is to save money by fi finding the errors as early as possible. Just it's less costly to do it during coding. So if we manage to find and correct errors during coding, we can save a lot of money. So how much? Well, this is a rule of thumb that I usually do use. If your team spend about five hours every month correcting errors that comes back from testing, and you can correct them immediately when you do programming, you can save about 100,000 Swedish crown per year only by moving the detection and error correction phase. So, how can we find uh, errors early? Well, let's look at the error types. We have syntax and semantic errors. That is usually caught by a compiler with different settings and so on. And uh, previously, in the old days, you used uh, to lint your code to find this uh, semantic and sem uh, syntax uh, error. You can also put up a, a coding rule or a user standard, and then it's good to have a static analysis tool to, uh, to support this process. The logical errors, this cannot be found by a static tool. Uh, traditional testing need, needs to be done to catch this. Of course, you can shortcut the feedback loop between requirements and developing, 
by using agile, agile methods, TDD, or you could put up a, a requirement management process that is more sharper. And then we have runtime errors. These are the one that occurs at first when you run the code. And this is the sweet spot with CodeZoner. Finding runtime errors before executing the code. So, how does CodeZoner work? You have your source code or binaries or a mix of them and then you launch the CodeZoner analysis. So there will be several parallel analyses performing this on this uh, code and of course CodeZoner can be tuned to um, with different settings and so on. And everything is stored in a database. And then you have a web browser or Eclipse to look and explore and view the result and the report. So what do we store in the database? Well, when you're using static analysis, you have hits, positive hits, or you have no hits. That is a negative. Of course, the negatives will never be stored because they are not found. But positives could be a true positive that is correctly identified, or it could be a false positive. This, this, this means that it's incorrectly identified. However, in most cases we have noticed that it's correctly identified, it, but the developers don't agree with the rule. And maybe we should exclude this rule of the analysis. Or maybe we should keep it. When we dealing with static code analysis, there are always a trade-off of this free conflicting dimension, that is recall, how many true positives we find, precision, how many low, low rate of uh, false positives, and we have a performance, how long time it will take to do the analysis. The default setting for code owner is to find serious flaws. This can be set by different presets in the tool as well and you can make your own settings. So how is static analysis done? Well, you analyze your code, you review, you assign, fix, improve. So this is the work process working for working with code owner warnings. It could be done by a single developer, but also by a whole team. So it's a kind of continuous improvement process. So, who uses CodeZoner? Well, the software development teams, quality insurance and architects, of course, use CodeZoner to reduce cost, time to market, and improve the security. What we also noticed recently that there is more security teams using CodeZoner, and that is due to a unique key feature called Taint Analysis. So, what is that? Well. There are certain places in your code that you input data. That could be network, files, sensors, database, and so on. This data can potentially be dangerous and maybe needs to be checked before it's propagating through the system. So code sonar will tell you where you enter data, how it flows through the system, and also if it's hitting any sensitive parts in the code like where you have system calls and so on. So it's very helpful and uh, to understand your software's attack surface and also how to protect your software. There is a short uh, demo of this, six minutes. Uh, so it's very good to, to see how CodeToner can do this paint analysis. This is a typical setup of code sonar. You manage your source code and binaries by Git. You uh, co uh, clone it and then you use Jenkins to build and launch the code sonar analysis and then you store it in the database. 
and then the developers, architects and other people that need to do anal analysis locally or by themselves, they also have this daemon uh, that is uh, launched locally and then the result is uploaded. And if you have, for instance, Jira or Bugzilla, you can also have plugins to this software. And you can download them freely on the links below. So, in order to summarize this, CodeZona delivers better quality, improved security and safety, and easier compliance for function safety standards and security standards. CodeZona is also certified by TIFF to, to fit for purpose for uh, safety critical applications. So that was a short introduction. I hope you are interested in looking at the demo as well. Thank you very much.